everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV, where we're coming to you today live from the floor of ITW 2025 in National Harbor. Uh, and we're joined today by leaders across the digital infrastructure industry who are telling us stories, news, trends, and innovations uh, that are happening right now. And I'm pleased to be joined by Brandon Roberts, who's manager of wholesale and carrier for Glow, Glow Fiber, excuse me, business. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, it's a busy, busy week. We were just talking, you know, it's a we're sort of day two, and how's the week so far for you? Yeah, it's been going great, uh, making a lot of connections. I think that's one of the things that uh, people are excited to get back into is just making connections with their peers and people in the industry. Yeah, it's so important, isn't it? And I know that you probably have a lot to talk about with the folks you're meeting with because you, Glow Fiber has been expanding really quite rapidly. So can you share with us some of that, some of what's happening? Yeah, uh, be happy to. So Glow Fiber has been expanding rapidly and really our growth is um, can be attributed to a few factors. Number one is our commitment to our fiber first strategy. And really, uh, to give you an idea of scale, this time in 2022, we had about 330,000 passings. Right now, we have over 600,000 residential and business passings. That's uh, three short years, almost doubled the size of our footprint, and that's just an incredible testament to um, how efficient the teams have been working at Chantel, building out these greenfield areas and getting fiber to the home and business. And, um, and really, this is mainly in the underserved and rural markets, which really um, can assist our carrier customers to being able to get to those uh, businesses that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to before, which is awesome. So that's number one. Number two is uh, our M&A strategy. We recently acquired Horizon, and with that came a strong commercial focus. Uh, in addition to that, they had an adjacent network to ours, which uh, really complemented our network and being able to get to uh, right, right now eight states, which is awesome. And then last but certainly not least is the people power. A lot of great people came over from Horizon, which complemented our Chantel team and have created kind of this super team, which we're super proud of. Third, I would say, is uh, really our, our dedication to delivering a um, uh, an exceptional customer experience. Uh, our technicians live in the areas that we service. Our salespeople live in the areas that we service. Our customer service is in the area that we service. We don't farm that out overseas. So when you talk to a Glow employee, a Chantel employee, you're talking to somebody who kids are at the same baseball games that you are. They shop at the same grocery stores that you do. And so we put a really high emphasis on the customer experience. And this is really, a, you know, you can see this in the fact that our churn is industry leading low. Once people come aboard the Glow train, they don't leave. They don't get off the Glow train. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and certainly, lastly, people vote with, with their wallet and certainly MPS scores. You can look at our MPS score and they're certainly significantly higher than the industry average for the telecommunications industry, which just goes to show that people love Glow. And then I would say last um, but but not least is our um, relationships that we've built with our carrier customers. Uh, you know, the, the fact that uh, we've invested heavily in our network, invested heavily in the underserved and rural markets, uh, gives our carrier customers an option that they didn't have before. So really, it's a win-win-win. It's a win for the end user who now has another option. Uh, it's a win for our carrier customers who can now service that customer where they didn't have the option before. And it's a win for us to bring another customer on board. And so uh, we're really proud of our strategy and, uh, and it's certainly working. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. It's always so nice to hear a, a really clear, well thought out strategy with, you know, set pillars. And one of the areas I kind of wanted to dive into a little bit further with you, I, I'm sure that you're experiencing it like, like everyone is, just this conversation around increased demand for high bandwidth services, et cetera, just with, you know, AI and everything coming on board with that. So how are you reacting to that and, you know, with your fiber services? Yeah, it's almost table stakes. You know, 10 gig was table stakes a few years ago, 100 gig, and, and certainly we're hearing 400 gig now. Um, we've got now with the acquisition of Horizon over 17,000 route miles of fiber. And uh, we're, we're in an eight state footprint now. And um, we're really committed to building uh, high capacity, low lat latency, carrier grade networks to be able to service our carrier customers. 
We are in over 30 data centers from Saramac into Chicago to, um, to um, WOW in Columbus to Equinex in Ashburn. Uh, we're, we're all over the place. And we really want to give our carrier customers uh, different options, whether they want to be in the high demand uh, data centers or they want to be a, a little bit off the beaten path. And we're there and we can service them with, with high capacity, low latency uh, data needs. We are continuing to upgrade uh, our network and our backbone. This year alone, we're spending millions of dollars to forklift portions of our network to be able to ubiquitously offer these high bandwidth, uh, uh, you know, high capacity circuits across our entire footprint, uh, which is just awesome to give our carrier customers uh, the ability to service their customers with the demands that they require. So going a little bit further with with AI again, not to keep coming back to that, but I just feel like it's it's a topic that's so important to so many, and it has been for years. But it's just it's just keeps escalating. So, what kind of advice are you giving to your carrier partners that you work with, and, and you know how they can best leverage uh, your services to meet that demand? Yeah, AI is awesome. Um, you know, it, it really is a game changer, both personally, I think, and professionally. Um, everybody should be using AI in just their daily life. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it really cuts down the decision making and allows that brain power to be used for other more mission critical tasks. Um, and so even simple things like, uh, you know, SOPs and just creating processes and, you know, yeah. a lot of organizations just lack simple documentation and, and, and onboarding documentation and, 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 and things like that. And so we can be using AI to fill those gaps. You know, from an organizational perspective, I would say a couple things. One um, is to keep it simple and stick with the fundamentals. Um, and and I would say that because really we we can look at it this in a few different ways. One is, um, you know, how are we going to use AI uh, for operations? And then how are we going to use it to impact the customer experience? I think we need to bucketize that in two ways. And and um, when we talk about operations, we're talking about things like um, preventative maintenance, for instance. We're talking about things like personalized service experiences, like chatbots, for instance, or um, uh, uh, predictive analytics, for instance. Being able to take a holistic view of a customer and, and package it nicely so that people know exactly what they have, what their trouble tickets are, what their customer tickets are, and really being able to dive into the data. And, uh, and then certainly from a customer experience perspective is, is really just being able to give the customers the information that they want, maybe even uh, that, they, that they didn't know they wanted. And I really think that it comes down to your data strategy. So how do you implement this? And, and really it's the number one thing that you need to do is, figure, is to define the win. Figure out what you want to get out of AI. And you've got to be able to clearly define that. And then once you've uh, kind of documented what that win looks like, it's being able to uh, provide clean data. If it, it's garbage in, garbage out with AI. And so if you have clean data and you know exactly what your win is, uh, and then you, you can load that into the large language model and get the outputs that you're looking for. But then the last step is, how am I gonna implement what the uh, AI is telling me to do? What am I gonna do with the information that AI is giving me? And you really have to have an implementation strategy. What am I gonna do with this and how am I going to put this uh, into action? And I think if you think about those things and document them beforehand uh, uh, and, and really focus on the customer experience, then it's going to be a win. That's a really helpful outline. We could print out a user guide, I think, <laughs> from that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, any final words here, you know, as you enter the, I guess it's the second half now. Of yeah, we're, we're in the second half. Keep making those connections. Yeah. Thank you for your time today, yeah, Brandon. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in today to JSA TV. Keep, keep tuning in live as we're coming to you today from ITW for the remainder of the day. And until then, stay connected. See you.